Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Here is Ina, and today I have a reporting for you. We will remove these two KKs from the Zdendrubia Noveli hybrid. The planter died. I don't know why, but the planter died. I think I killed the other division by mistake and it pushed out two cakes in order to survive. And it's very common with dendrobians. Usually they push out cakes even when they are healthy, but when they are dying as a strategy to survive, they try to push out cakes and to feed them before the mother plant dies. If you don't know, cakes are usually baby plants, mini orchids that are identical to the mother plant. So it pushes out these new divisions, these new plantlets that we will grow and we'll have the same flowers because this genetically is identical to the mother plant, as I said before. So when the cake is a little bit grown and all the roots, you can notice that the roots are around 10 centimeters long you can safely remove from the mother plant and pot it separately. It's ideal that the roots have to be like between 10 to 15 centimeters long to be able to survive on their own. Why? Because otherwise they cannot exactly absorb water in order to feed the plants. These cakes are very tiny. It's smaller than what I would love them to be. But I can see that the mother plant is completely dead by now and probably will not be able to feed these cakes much longer. And I'm going away as well for a month, not a month, 20 days, but I'll be able to completely to stay here and observe these and to remove it later. So it's better for me to remove these two plants now, pot them up, and I will give them more chance to survive than just leaving them here and maybe the mother plant will not be feeding them anymore and then may, they might die as well. So I would love to take you along. I hope you enjoy this type of content. If you do, hit the like button, leave a comment down below. And I will show you how I will remove these cakes and how I intend to pot them up. I've done that before. Usually, Dendrobium nobles are very resilient orchids. You shouldn't be afraid of do that because there are great chances that we'll be able to save this plant. And maybe we'll see blooms in the future. I'll keep you up to date. So now I will change the camera for you to see better. Let's start. So as you can see here, the two keys are still attached to the mother plant. I will try to remove them without using any scissors or without cutting the plant because we don't want to break the roots and we don't want to open any wound on these little plants. If I had more time, as I said, I would allow the plant to grow a little bit more. It's safer to wait for your plants to grow. So when you remove them, they have greater chance to survive. But I will not wait much longer and I will do it now and I'm gonna let's start trying to remove that. So the first thing that I will do, oopsie daisy, the roots are going everywhere here, especially with this growth here. This is the longer one. I will just come to my plant, grab it from the base and try to twist it a little bit. Let's see. Like so. And there we go. Can you see here? My cakey, this is the part where it was attached to the mother plant. The roots are very long. This one is at least 15 centimeters long and they are healthy, which is great. Let's remove the second one. This one is smaller, the roots are smaller as well. I'm turning here for you to see. So twist again from one side to another, being really careful with the roots. Don't want to break the roots. And there we go. The second cake is also removed from the mother plant. Let's take this pot out of the way. We're not going to use that again. So I have both cakes here, which is great. And now I have this pot as well. This is a very small pot. It's one of these nursery pots square nursery pots that's opaque, completely black, which is great. I don't need to have a transparent pot. What I will do is 
I will add a little bit of moss at the bottom. I usually repot most of my orchids. Let me focus for you to see. I usually repot most of my orchids with moss at the bottom, moss at the bottom, because it helps me to, to water them. Moss is a very absorbent mix. And especially with keikis and small plants, it's very nice to the root system. I will add a little bit of bark in between. And everything has to be fluffy because we don't want to suffocate these roots. And uh, they will both fill my pot. As you can see, they are very, very tiny. I'll keep adding my bark and moss together like so. And let's see. This one is already, already fits in my pot, like so. Just be careful and gentle to the roots. Don't want to break the only roots that this plant has. As you can see, although the plants are very, very tiny, the roots are very long, uh, which is okay. Hopefully it will help me to save my plant. So I will keep just filling the pot. Look, I'm not going to soak it with any portion or with fertilizer or anything else. I'm going to, I always do that. I play safely. I do what I know best and uh, what I've done in the past before I forget. I have some slow release fertilizer here. I always add a little bit, some beads. The, the plants are very tiny. I don't need a lot of fertilizer here. Although dendrobium novelly, if you don't know that, they need a lot of fertilizer when they are growing because they grow very, very fast. But this one, I don't even know if they will survive yet because they are tiny, tiny plants. So I'm not worried about that. I will worry about giving them more fertilizer when they are mature plants. And I know that I need to feed them in order for them to bloom. This one, it's not gonna bloom this year. It will just grow and maybe push out new growths. And then maybe next year, they grow very fast, who knows? I will be able to add more fertilizer to my plant. So, the plant disappeared on the pot, which is okay, I don't mind. The roots are all there and the plant is very, very tiny. Let me give you some close-ups here. Can you see? The two growths are here. The roots are all inside my pot and these are my tiny, tiny babies with long roots. So let's see, I hope I hope you can see me properly. Sometimes it's difficult to focus on my own and my camera doesn't focus automatically. Just letting you know. That's how simple it is for you to remove and pot the Androgonobili cakes. Usually it's quite easy to detach the little plants from the mother plant. And also because they are still pushing out roots. So we don't have a massive root system. We don't have roots to cut. Please don't cut the roots. These roots are essential for this plant to survive. It was a very easy task because the pot's quite small as well. So I will tell you, go with the mix that you know best how to work with. Usually bark is great. We, these plants are epiphytes, so bark will offer enough air to the mix and you can just soak it for 15 minutes every time that you water your plant and it should be fine. I just potted mine up. I used dry sphagnum moss and bark so I need to offer this plant some water as well before I place it into my shelving. But if you don't have much experience, go with full bark, pot your cake there, soak it 15 minutes and leave it on a shelving and it should be fine. If you already have the mother plant, you can pot the cakes with the mother plant if, your mother, if the mother plant is alive, or you can pot separately and when it's uh, healthy enough, you can give it to a friend or you can do anything else that you want to do with that plant. I hope mine will grow healthily and I'll keep you up to date. If you enjoy this type of content, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, subscribe to my channel, I have an Instagram account as well. It's not the most updated at the moment. It's difficult to find time to update everything, but I have some beautiful blooms there. Uh, it's called One Wash It's a Day. And that's all that I want to tell you today. I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.